So following UFC 299's title fight loss, Marlon Chido Vera and his head coach Jason Perillo have had some very concerning and rather questionable social media posts that I've seen online that I want to highlight and go over in today's video, guys, because when it comes to a fighter and the coach, it's a very important relationship, and it needs to be an open one where there is opportunity to critique each other and see how, as a fighter and a coach, moving forward, we can work better together to achieve greatness. And one of the things that I'm seeing in these posts that we're going to go over in just a second is Marlon Vera and Jason Perillo are going to have to make some changes, whether that's they stay together or maybe they take a little bit of a, of a, they go their separate ways. I don't know. But what I am going to start by saying, I am a huge Marlon Cheeto Vera fan. I like what Cheeto's about. I think he's a fantastic fighter. I also think Jason Perillo is a very respected coach in the industry. He's very good at what he does. But just because you're good at what you do does not mean that you are going to be open uh, to be criticized. And that's what I'm going to do in this video because th there's a tale of two stories. Whenever you watch a fight live, it's almost like you tend to have a little bit of a different understanding of what went on than when you watch it back. But with this fight, there were some things that stood out to me that I was hearing live on the broadcast that I remember, which a lot of the time I'm not paying super close attention to the corner work during the live uh, fight, you know, because there's a lot going on. I'm, you know, the, the, half the time they have translators blah, 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 in the other language talking over, you know, the cornermen. So I'm always just usually kind of tuning out. But at UFC 299, I was completely dialed in. And one of the reasons being, like, I'm going to go ahead and read this first post to you. And then we're going to kind of go into a little bit about Jason Perillo first. as we, And then we'll get to Marlon Cheeto Vera. But with this post here, couldn't be prouder of my fighter at Cheeto Vera. He, comp uh, he competed for the UFC world title representing his country, Ecuador, and every hardworking man that doesn't give up. Cheeto's one and one now with this kid. The kid got the decision and retained the title. Cheeto got the knockout in the first fight with no clock. Cheeto goes to jail for, yeah, that. So I don't like to talk about that. But anyway, guys, this is delusional thinking. The first fight I've even said in my breakdowns, I did go on the record thinking that maybe in the later rounds, Marlon Cheeto Vera could put something to, together and put uh, Sean O'Malley away. That was going to be his key to victory. There were so many missed opportunities for Marlon Cheeto Vera in this matchup. Now, a lot of that is accredited to the speed, the footwork, the technicalities, and how good Sean O'Malley is overall. But Cheeto Vera is coming back to his corner, and it's the same story from Jason Perillo over and over and over again. There's just no urgency to put the foot on the gas. Like, you know that every fight that Cheeto has is always the same thing every single time. And I watched the Rob Font Marlon Cheeto Vera fight back, and I feel like yesterday. And if I would have watched that fight before giving my prediction for UFC 299, I'm sorry, but there's no way I would have went with Cheeto Vera. And the reasons for that being, Rob Font was having a lot of success on the feet. Not only that, but Cheeto Vera, it's the same story you know, over and over and over again. It, it's a slow start. He's just slow to get going. And then eventually he kind of starts to pick up the pace, sort of. And Jason Perillo just doesn't seem to have the answers for him in the corner. Like in this matchup, Make no mistake about it. This was a one-sided massacre by Sean O'Malley. This fight was not close. And m there were no suggestions to Marlon Cheeto Vera to switch up what they were doing in the game plan, right? And 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 so that's kind of why I'm coming at Jason Perillo's, you know, some of the corner advice because there's nothing, like, why were you not, Marlon Vera is a guy that has great submissions. He's not known for going out there and chasing takedowns but you're standing in front of one of the best strikers the UFC has to offer and possibly has ever seen in terms of the technicalities of the striking and you're getting pieced up on the feet. Why are we not level changing? Why are we not trying to close the distance? Why are we not ending our combinations with a leg kick or something to try to get to Sean O'Malley? We're, we're going to kind of get to a little bit more of that as we go here, but then I want to go to uh, Marlon Cheeto Vera here, right? So this is post-fight. He says, you know, don't cry over spilt milk. Life goes on and my time will come back. Now that's true, right? The guy's still young. Everyone's acting like Marlon Cheeto Vera's 50. The guy's like 30 years old. He still has time. Marlon Cheeto Vera is a very good fighter. The concerns that I have is down the rabbit hole that they are going with is which is some of this delusion that we're going to get into here um, in just a second with Marlon Chudo Vera and Jason Perillo from his post that you just saw. But when we're reading the comments, like, look at people, man. 
They are just, you know, you should change your coach. Don't cry over hair, hair gel. You know, like th this comment right here, trilogy uh, soon, Sean would have been dead if that was a street fight. Like guys, at the end of the day, it's when these MMA guys go in there and they box and they're like, oh, if it was a real fight, it's not a real fight. You know, it's not a real fight. You signed up for this. It's five rounds. It's 25 minutes. And you know that you have 25 minutes to make something happen. And that's why I'm critiquing Jason Perillo as well, because Jason Perillo your guy, Marlon Vera is a fantastic fighter. He has good submissions. Why are we not encouraging a level change? Why are we not encouraging, hey, listen, let's put our hands up. Let's try to move forward. I know that the guy's fast on the outside. Like, let's be honest with our fighter here. Let's not just, you know, ask questions of, are you with me? Are you, like, I understand that some, there's a time and a place for that. We are in a title fight. And, you know, who knows if this opportunity comes around again? And here you are kind of playing this game. And then we, 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 we go over to X. You know, Marlon Chido Vera has been on the MMA Hour um, with Ariel Hawani, and he said a lot of different things. One, he was going after Corey Sanhagen for the YouTube thing. And it's like, first of all, Corey Sanhagen has really, really high fight IQ. And Marlon Chido Vera is taking some digs at him. Like, come on, man. Corey Sanhagen, yeah, he won a boring decision over you, but he, he won that pretty fair and square, I'd say. I would say it was pretty much domination. And then we go on here. Every time I was grabbing Sean, it was like grabbing a fish out of water, Marlon Chido Vera says, and he was extremely greasy. Now, with the utmost respect, how the hell would Marlon Chido Vera know if Sean O'Malley was greased? Because I got to tell you, I don't think I could count on one hand the amount of times that Marlon Chido Vera w w was able, it was in distance to even grab Sean O'Malley at all in that entire fight. Sean O'Malley kept him at range the entire matchup, just kept stinging him with shots from the outside, kept his footwork. You know, every time Marlon Chido Vera is trying to cut him off, Sean O'Malley just keeps on moving, circling off. The, just the delusion coming from Marlon Chido Vera and his coach Jason Perillo here is just not a good look, in my opinion, for what is going to happen moving forward. But those are just a few pieces of... Uh, of, of evidence that, that I wanted to show you that kind of back up what I'm going to say at the in conclusion here. I understand that fighters have a strong bond with their coach. And a lot of the time we see fighters, you know, sometimes they switch camps, sometimes they find new coaches, sometimes they're with the same coach their entire career. I'm not encouraging Marlon Chido Vera to leave Jason Perillo. I'm not encur I'm never encouraging someone to just be disloyal and go jump ship or whatever it might may be. But we see this happen in fighting all the time. Sometimes you're just not you're not making those steps that you need to make in order to get to that level that you know you can finally reach. And with Jason Perillo, it's great that he supports Marlon Chido Vera. And I'm sure outside of fighting, these guys are very close. They're good friends and they have they have a strong bond. But business is business. And what we have seen time and time again from Marlon Chido Vera is the same story in every single fight. The slow starting, waiting until the end of the fight, trying to land some sort of miraculous shot. Maybe we were all delusional if we thought Marlon Chido Vera was going to win this fight. Because when I watch that Rob Font matchup back, and I look at the improvements that Sean O'Malley has made, I don't know where Marlon Chido... Like, I just don't understand the game plan coming into this fight. I don't know if they thought too heavily into that first matchup, but I had even said in my breakdowns, guys... This is going to be a hard fight for Marlon Chido Vera. He has got to attack the legs of Sean O'Malley. Even in the Aljamain Sterling matchup where Sean O'Malley was able to win and knock out Sterling, Sterling was still having a lot of success with the leg kicks in that matchup. Why are you not attacking the legs of Sean O'Malley? I don't understand. Okay, so he's getting out of the way. Okay, so extend the combinations. You, you, you come in with a blitz. Like we've seen Jan Blahovich do this. We've seen guys do this. We've seen Poirier do this. Come, come blitzing in with a couple of shots. Tuck your chin and, and, and try to, uh, hot, behind the punches, add in those leg kicks. And we didn't see any of that. So if that's not the route you're going to go, then why are we not trying a level change? Why are we not trying some different things instead of just sitting on the outside and letting Sean O'Malley snipe us at range? Because if it wasn't for the durability and just the sure will and fire that Marlon Chido Vera possesses, this would have been a finish.
And it would have been a finish on the end of Sean O'Malley. And the only reason that that liver shot happened was because Sean O'Malley, he kind of was listening to his coach until the last seconds there. He didn't see, I guess, much threat coming back his way. Decided to hang out in the phone booth and ate a really hard uh, liver shot by Marlon Chudo Vera. And O'Malley's lucky, actually, that there wasn't, you know, that much time left. I know that he knew the clock and he knew how much time was there. But still, when you get hit with that liver shot, it drops you and it kind of just shuts you down for, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds, whatever it is. But it, point being... If Marlon Chido Vera is going to get back on track, I, I encourage him to take some time away, right? Who am I? But I think that Marlon Chido Vera is going to take some time away. I, I saw a photos of him surfacing. He already looks like he's recovering really well. He's got some, you know, some things to work on and improve on. But we have got to start seeing more urgency from Marlon Chido Vera. And we need to see more influence in the corner of Marlon Vera to approach these fights in an MMA fashion. Utilize your skill sets. You have nasty out elbows. You have nasty ground and pound. You do have good submissions. Let's try to add those into the game and let's stop waiting for the fight to play out too long before we start making moves. Because when you're in there with a skilled guy like, like Sean O'Malley, and I do believe Sean O'Malley is that good. However, there were things that Marlon Chidovera and Jason Perillo could have been pushing for for them to do to execute to have a better opportunity at UFC 299. But I'd be curious to hear what you all think down in the comments below. Like this video, comment your take on this. What do you think Marlon Chido Vera should do? Should he stay with Perillo? You know, what, what are your, some of your critiques? I'd be curious to hear what you all think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I appreciate you all. See you next time.